where did our Lord Jesus Christ go when he died physically? Let me prove that when Jesus died, he was still alive. He was still conscious. He was still aware. He had awareness, consciousness. He didn't go to sleep. He wasn't unconscious, quote unquote. Go to John 2, 19 to 22. Jesus answered, sent unto them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Who will raise it up? He will. I personally will raise it up. Then said the Jews, 46 years was this temple in building and wilt thou, you, rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. Now, did you catch it? Jesus says, destroy my body and I will raise up my body in three days. Can I ask you guys a question? How can Jesus personally resurrect his body to immortality if he was unconscious, if he ceased to be conscious when he physically died? Because physical death doesn't mean you become unconscious, quote unquote. You cease to be conscious. You lose consciousness. Physical death is when your soul and spirit leave your body and enter into another dimension. So with that said, when our Lord Jesus died, where did his human spirit, his human soul go to for those three days? Now pay attention here. Up until Jesus' death, resurrection, ascension to heaven, no one entered into God's heavenly presence. When the dead died, the righteous and the evil alike went to the abode called Sheol, Sheol in Greek, Hades. But there was two sections, two compartments, so to speak. There was a section in which unbelievers went to be tormented, experienced agony and pain and misery. But there was another section another compartment in the same dimension where believers went and they were in a state of peace, state of bliss, state of joy, and they didn't experience pain, misery, or discomfort. And you find this articulated in the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Let's look at it real quickly. Luke 16, 22 to 26. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Pay attention. They both died. The poor man, the beggar, was taken to the bosom of Abraham to be in the company of Abraham, his father. And in hell, now in the Greek, the word is Hades, Hades. And in hell, in Hades, the rich man died and was buried. In hell, he lifted up his eyes and he saw, even though he's in torment, he saw Abraham afar off at a distance, but he could still see him and recognize him. And Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime. Remember when you were living on earth, receivest thy good things. You lived lavishly. You enjoyed life on earth. And likewise, Lazarus suffered. He experienced evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. See, he's in comfort with me. Where we're at, we're in comfort and rest and peace. You over there, though we see you, you're in torment. But now notice 26. And beside all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed. So that, that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. So we can't go to where you're at. Though we see each other, we're in the same dimension. Neither can they pass to us that you would come from thence. Notice they're in the same dimension. But notice there are two compartments and there's a gulf where one can't cross over to the other. You guys see that? Okay, now here's a question for you. It says, the rich man saw afar off at a great distance Abraham and saw Lazarus. And he knew it was Abraham, and he knew it was Lazarus, and he said, Father Abraham. So he recognized him. That's Father Abraham, my father Abraham. That means the rich man was an ethnic Jew. He was ethnically a Jew because he calls Abraham his father. 
So that means Abraham was his physical ancestor. Father Abraham. And he goes, tell Lazarus to do this for me. Can I ask you guys a question? Here's my question for all of you. Neither Abraham nor Lazarus nor the rich man were in physical bodies. How did the rich man know this man here that's standing, that's Abraham, and there's another man next to him, that's Lazarus. How could he recognize them and realize they're not the same person when they don't have physical bodies? Because they had a spiritual shape, a spiritual body of some kind by which they could be identified. You get it now? And that should cause you great hope and joy that if you're a Christian, because the physical death is not the end of you, saint. Physically, when you die, your spirit leaves, and your spirit has a shape and a form by which the inhabitants of heaven will recognize you, and you're going to recognize them. And you're going to see your loved ones alive, conscious, in peace, pain-free, cancer-free, disease-free. That's the assurance that Jesus' resurrection gives us. Now, follow with me here. Follow with me so far. Are you seeing that the rich man recognizes Abraham and Lazarus? That means even without a physical body, as spirits, as souls, their spirits and souls have a form, an appearance, a shape by which they are still identifiable. With me there before I move on to the next point? Let me give you further proof from Luke 16, 22 to 23. Let's relook at Luke 16, 22 to 23. So I can make the point about Jesus, because we're going to go to Jesus and we're going to go to Abraham. Pay attention, guys. It's not enough that we read. We want to read with understanding to get the meat of Scripture. Notice what it said here. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. First question, what were they carrying? Not his body. It said he died, but the angels carried him. What were they carrying to Abraham? Yes. Wait, so he has a shade, a soul, a spirit that can be carried? So though it's a spirit, it's still tangible enough that you can carry it, you can touch it, you can embrace it, you can be held by it? You catch it now? But then 22, 23 stated, the rich man died and was buried. But then in 23 it says, he found himself in Hades in torment. But wait, he's buried. So which part of him was in Hades in, in torment? But it says the rich man died, was buried. So they buried his body, but then he found himself in torment, in flames, in Hades. What part was buried? What part was in Hades? What part of the rich man was buried? What part of him was in Hades? Oh, so what part of him was in Hades? His soul. So are you getting it now? Is it making sense now? If you believe in the Bible and let the Bible interpret itself and don't impose a tradition by some denomination that doesn't allow you to accept what the Bible teaches about the state of the dead, then the Bible does not teach soul sleep. It's not biblical. And those who say it does explain all these passages away. Oh, that's the parable. Oh, but this doesn't mean that. And that doesn't mean this. They have to explain it away. Okay, if we got that now, let's talk about where Jesus went. Where did our Lord go for those three days that his body lay in the tomb? The ancient tradition of the church, and you'll find documents from at least the second century affirming it, and it's mentioned in the creeds, that the three days that our Lord's body lay in the tomb, his human spirit, his human soul went to Hades, Hades, which in some English translations they render as hell. And I'll even prove it to you. I'm going to recite the following, the Apostles' Creed. And you'll find elements of the Apostles' Creed in the writing of the church father, Irenaeus. Irenaeus was the bishop of Lyons, France. He's writing around 180 AD. And he mentions... Traditions that they received from the apostles. And Irenaeus was a martyr of the faith. He died as a martyr for Jesus. And he was a disciple of the bishop Polycarp. Follow with me. Irenaeus, disciple of the bishop Polycarp. Polycarp was the disciple of the apostle John. So Irenaeus was taught by Polycarp, who was taught by the apostle of John. And Irenaeus mentions that when he was young, he recalls seeing the apostle John. 
So we have this unbroken chain. Irenaeus, taught by Polycarp, taught by the Apostle John. Now, the elements of this creed you'll find stated in Irenaeus. Now, you can go to Sheikh Google, put Irenaeus Apostles' Creed, and should come up. Let me recite the Apostles' Creed. Let's see if you catch it. Are you ready? I'm going to recite it. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, the only begotten Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. Greek, he descended into Hades. There you go. That's part of the Apostles' Creed. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, from thence, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Clear? So, do you see this is the ancient faith of the church? Christ, for those three days, descended into the realm of the dead. So now I'm going to show it to you from Scripture. So let me repeat so we can go into the Scripture evidence. Let me repeat. Up until Jesus' death, resurrection, ascension to heaven, all believers went to the realm of the dead called Hades. And I just showed you from the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, there were two abodes or compartments that, were separated by a gulf, so they can cross over to one another. One abode, one compartment for, for believers. They're in peace. They're in comfort. They're in a state of happiness and bliss. The other, they're in a state of torment. The belief of the church was this, that when Jesus went there, he proclaimed victory over the power of darkness and proclaimed the victory that unbelievers lost out in by their unbelief. And then he went there to take the spirits of the believers back to heaven to dwell now in his presence and the presence of the Father and the holy angels. That's why now when you die as a believer, you don't go to Hades. You go to God's heavenly presence where you behold God the Father in visible glory Christ in his physical body glorified, and the angels and all other believers. You dwell with the triune God. Now, let me show you that in scripture. Are you ready? Acts 2, we're going to pick it up in 24 in midstream. Acts 2, 24 to 28. Let's read. Let me give you the scripture evidence. Acts 2, 24 to 28. Guys, pay attention and read now. Peter preaching the first sermon on Pentecost as he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Notice what he says. Whom God hath raised up, God has raised up Jesus, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him. So he's going to quote a psalm of David. Psalm 16, verses 8 to 11. And he says, David is prophesying about Jesus' death and resurrection. So what did David write? What did David say? For David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw... I foresaw, I didn't forehear, hear what would happen. I saw in advance what would happen. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he's on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Now watch this. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Why? Because thou will not leave my soul in hell. Notice, my soul in hell. The Greek word is Hades, Hades. Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Now watch this. Watch what this is saying. Pay attention. Watch this. Peter says, folks, why are you shocked that Messiah died and was raised from the dead? David, a thousand years in advance, prophesied. Messiah, God's Holy One, would be raised from the dead. Where? Psalm 16, verses 8 to 11. Psalm 16, verses 8 to 11. When David said, My soul was not abandoned in Hades, 
nor did God allow his Holy One to see corruption. He was talking about the death and resurrection of Jesus, the Messiah. Are you with me so far? David is prophesying a thousand years in advance that Messiah would die, but he would not be abandoned in the netherworld, but would be raised to life. Okay, you got that part so far. If you're getting it, now let's show you Peter's inspired interpretation. Don't forget, this is Pentecost. He's now filled with the Holy Spirit. He's speaking by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit tells Peter, quote this and now explain it. Here's the inspired, Holy Spirit inspired commentary on Psalm 16, verses 8 to 11. Acts 2, 29 to 32. Acts 2, 29 to 32. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried. And his sepulchre, his grave, is with us unto this day. We know he's dead. There's his grave. He never came back to life. He died and remained dead. So then what is David talking about? Pick it up at 30. Therefore, being a prophet... Bring a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. God swore to David that from your physical line, I'm going to raise up the Christ from your physical seed, from your physical line. And I'm going to seat him on your throne, David. That's what God promised David. Now watch this. He, David, verse 31. He, David, being a prophet, receiving revelation from the Holy Spirit, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul, the soul of Messiah, was not left in hell. Hades, not hell as we know it. Not left in hell. What was not left in hell? His soul. Neither his flesh did see corruption. Notice a distinction. His soul was one place and his flesh was in another place. His soul went to hell and his flesh was buried. But God made sure that the flesh body of Messiah did not corrupt and his soul did not remain in the netherworld because on the third day, his soul came back to his flesh body and was raised to life. This Jesus hath God raised up whereof we all are witnesses. Do you catch what he just said? When Jesus Messiah died, his soul was in one place and his flesh was in another. So how did God fulfill Psalm 16? By summoning the soul of Messiah, his human soul, his human soul, back into his fleshly body. And so when his human soul left Hades, entered that flesh body in the grave, the body came to life, and now Jesus' flesh body became immortal. And then in that flesh body, Jesus went to heaven. That's what you're celebrating this Sunday. You're celebrating that the human soul spirit of Jesus returned to his physical body before it corrupted. And then his physical body became immortal and destructible. And then in that physical body entered heaven... And all the souls that were there in Hades were brought out and taken into heaven, meaning the souls of the righteous, the believers. So now they're in heaven with the triune God and angels.